Joining us now is Josh Luber, co-founder and CEO of StockX and host of StockX TV. So like a traditional stock market, Josh, your company allows you to connect buyers and sellers of things, and right now you are focused on sneakers. So last week, big baller brand, AKA LeVar Ball and his son Lonzo announced it's releasing its own sneaker, the ZO2 Prime, priced at $495. So what are your thoughts on this? What do you think about it? Uh, I think it is the most expensive performance basketball shoe ever created. Um, look, this is a shoe that was not created by or with Nike or Adidas or Under Armour or any brand, right? So these guys went and did this on their own. The best way to get anybody talking about this was to price it at $495. The next most expensive basketball shoe ever was about $200, right? So, so we're not even close. Um, what's interesting though, particularly in the performance basketball space, Prices have been going down the past couple of years. LeBron's have gone down from 200 to 175. Um, KD's have been dropping. Nike, Under Armour, all going to a lower price point. So this was a great way to get everyone talking about this. But the reality is it's, it's way out of line. The only time that we've seen any shoes really resell, or excuse me, retail for this amount of money is over the past couple of years, Jordan Brand has done a couple premium shoes, a couple Jordan 1s, a couple Jordan 4s, and these shoes retailed for $400. But these were not performance shoes, these were lifestyle shoes, and they came with very high quality material, so way different than what's happening here. Josh, I like that you pointed out that, you know, he's not with any of the majors like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, because last month the Nike executive actually calling out LeVar Ball and what's going on with this whole shoe sort of movement. And if I may for a second quote this Nike executive saying the worst thing to happen to basketball in the last 100 years, that's specifically referring to the father and, of course, his push, because there are three sons, obviously Lonzo Ball being the first one to really make it into the major league. He has another son that's 18 and another son that's 15 who actually just put up 92 points in a high school game. That is beyond impressive. But really, isn't the translation that Nike is mad? I mean, that's really what it is, because what they're coming in and doing is really disrupting the model. You say the only way to get people to talk about it was to make it at some astronomical price. They're probably not going to get for the shoe. But this is really a play are saying before a prayer that's supposedly supposed to go number three overall in the draft when that happens in June or July, excuse me, is going to disrupt the entire endorsement model of, hey, you make it to the major leagues, you get an endorsement deal with the Nike, Under Armour, that sort of company, and you put out a shoe under their company. Look, they, it's good for them. Good for them trying to disrupt the model. Good for them trying to do something on their own. Um, but right now, where they're at, coming out with a shoe that no one has seen, no one has seen anything about the, the design or the technology. All we've seen is, is pictures of a prototype, and at $495, um, there's still a lot, a lot of questions. And particularly when you talk about on the design and technology side, right? Again, this is supposed to be a performance basketball shoe. So on the design standpoint, there are a lot of similarities to pretty much every Kobe shoe ever, right? So this is the Kobe 6. The, the, the Zo 2 Prime looks very much like the Kobe 6 on the upper. This is the Kobe 8, right? It has almost identical eyelets to the Kobe 8. This is the Kobe 10. It has almost identical tongue to the Kobe 10, right? This is the Kobe 11. It has almost identical midsole to the Kobe 11 and overall shape of the shoe. So on the design standpoint, look, you know, maybe they're copying, maybe they're borrowing. You know, there's a lot of things that people use similarly on, on uppers, but the sole may be most problematic across the board for big baller brands. If you take a close look at the sole, it looks almost exactly like the Adidas Boost Sole, which is new innovative technology that Adidas is putting through almost all of their top shoes right now. And that right there you know, could become very problematic. But since we haven't seen it, we haven't seen any specs on what the technology actually is in that, there's no guarantee that this is actually a performance shoe. What's really interesting, if you look at the description of the shoes on their website, right, and I'm, and I'm going to read this right here, it says an ortholite insole is embedded throughout the entire insole for maximum comfort. Saying a shoe has ortholite is kind of like saying a shoe has leather or rubber or plastic. Um, it's pretty much everywhere. It's not like it has Zoom or Boost or any of these other technologies. Um, 
So Incidentally, Ortholite's actually spelled wrong on the website, so <laughs> it's, it's a very interesting play from a design and, uh, and tech standpoint. Okay, so Josh, you think this $495 price tag is expensive when there are still a lot of unknowns out there, but there are shoes that go, that are sold on your particular platform that are well north of $495. So give us a range. I mean, what is the most expensive shoe right now priced in real time on your website? Or at least give us a range of what people can expect if they go to StockX. Sure. Look, if you go into the resale market right now, I mean, shoes range anywhere from a couple hundred to tens of thousands of dollars. Um, right now, two of the biggest shoes or most recent big releases is um, this right here is the uh, Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 White. This shoe resells for about $500 right now. Right? On the other hand, the last big Nike release is, uh, is this shoe, which is called the Jordan 4 Cause. It's a collaboration between Jordan Brand and the artist Cause, and this sells for about $1,600 right now. What's interesting, though, if you're comparing the, the big baller brand shoe at $495 versus some of these that resell for over $1,500, the big difference is that the big baller shoe is retailing for $495. There's been almost no shoes that retail for over $400 that also sell out and resell a lot on the secondary market. In fact, there's only one that we can think of, right? It's this shoe right here. This is the Nike Hyper Adapt. This retailed for $720. And it literally includes technology from the future, right? This is auto lacing technology that was designed from Back to the Future 2. And so this shoe sold out. This shoe sells for more than $720. But other than that, we don't see high priced shoes reselling for a lot of money. Well, you see, away from necessarily basketball players, the um, Air Yeezy is a very popular shoe. Every time you know he releases a new shoe, it seems to have an even higher value in the secondary market. Is it those type of shoes that people are really going to be coming to your platform for? Yeah, absolutely, right? Um, look, the entire resale sneaker market is just supply and demand. Um, but when you have a shoe like the Yeezy, which is a shoe in collaboration between Adidas and Kanye West, the inherent demand that Kanye brings to that, that part of the equation makes those shoes sell for significantly more. The Yeezy V2 White, that retails for only $220 and is selling for $500. Other Yeezys sell for as much as $5,000. All right, Josh, also to the NBA playoffs, does that change the, the demand, the prices on your platform at all? Not particularly, right? Um, we still have a lot of the signature athletes who have their own shoe left in the playoffs. Uh, LeBron, Kyrie, Steph, uh, Clay Thompson, James Harden. But in general, the playoffs doesn't really impact the price of those shoes. It is, at its core, just supply and demand. So the fact that they're wearing it in the playoffs doesn't change much. What's more interesting to watch for in the playoffs is some of the guys that don't have shoe deals and can wear whatever shoe they want. Right? So the, the best person to watch, although now he's no longer in the playoffs, is P.J. Tucker. Right? So P.J. Tucker wore this shoe in game one against the Cavs. This is the Yeezy 2 Red October. It's the last shoe that Nike did with Kanye West. And this is a $5,000 shoe that P.J. Tucker wore in a playoff game against the Cavs. I like that shoe. Well, I don't, I don't remember P.J. Tucker actually winning, so I don't know if those $5,000 shoes actually helped him out too much. Josh. But at least he looked good, Corey. Come on. Well, he, look, he looked stylish, but perhaps he <laughs> should have gone with something with better tech specs that could have helped him win the game and not send his uh, season uh, to the dying trash bin so soon. Josh, talk to us about the broader sort of stock exchange market place that takes uh, that occurs on your platform in terms of if I have a shoe and I want to sell it, perhaps I like the Yeezy shoe. What is what are the dynamics? How does it all work? Right. So StockX is a stock market of things, but it's a consumer marketplace. So fundamentally, we're connecting buyers and sellers to buy or sell a shoe. But the way that it connects buyers and sellers is exactly like the world's stock markets. And what that means is that there is transparency of data. You understand what a shoe is worth, and it creates a market price for that shoe. So this shoe, the market price may be $5,000, and anyone can buy it for $5,000 or anyone can sell it for $5,000. And that's a big, big change from how most consumer marketplaces work today, where essentially you can just go buy something. But it gives the people to sell stock, sell sneakers as if they were stocks the way the exchange works. All right, Josh, I like that red shoe. I'm, I'm glad that we have it out there front and center. Good to see you as always, Josh Luber, co-founder of StockX and host of StockX TV. Thanks again. Thank you.